On Sunday, the South Bank Sinfonia will perform the first of three concerts reflecting the changing landscape of music and politics in the UK since the Second World War. The performances are part of the South Bank Centre's Changing Britain Festival. And the man curating these concerts is London-based conductor Jonathan Berman, and he joins me now. Jonathan, how does one go about reflecting Changing Britain in a series of classical concerts? Well, with great difficulty, actually. <laughs> and luckily for me, I don't have to reflect everything. Mm. The Changing Britain Festival at the South Bank Centre has a whole bunch of different events from films, speeches, um, other concerts and our concerts. So what I did was I, I have these three time periods. The first one is just post-war, and then there's the 80s and early 90s, the Thatcher and major years, and then from 97 until the present day. And um, I wanted to get an idea of how artists responded and interacted with their surroundings. So I looked at what there was in literature, in, on film, in classical music, contemporary classical music. So for the first concert, I found when people returned back from the war, there was this amazing ideology. People had fought for something they believed in, and they wanted to rebuild England in the image of what they'd fought for. So we have the birth in the late... 40s of the welfare state, the national health system. And this is um, mirrored in the, in the poetry of John Betjeman, who uh, describes these pastoral settings, the beauty of pastoral England, and a whole wealth of composers who wrote pastoral music. Um, we're performing pieces by Walton, Oldham, Tippett, and Britton, all based on an Elizabethan, what could be more English or British than Elizabethan, uh, melody, Selinger's Round. But then, to answer your question about changing Britain, something happened in the mid to late 50s. There was a depression, there was debt, um, there was even rationing again. And this was mimicked by the young voices of, for instance, Harold Pinter. We have some early poems of his and three, at the time, very young composers who formed what was called the Manchester School. They were, up, they were based up at the Manchester Conservatoire and they wrote hard, angular, atonal, sometimes serial music. And we present three short, very early pieces by them, which is very interesting because they are now, um, they've just celebrated their 80th birthdays in the last few years. So they're now sort of the, um, the head of the uh, composer's tradition in the UK in a certain way. Then the second concert we, we present one main piece, which is a monodrama, a sort of opera uh, for one woman, sung by pa Pamela Helen Stevens. And it presents a, uh, a woman who's in prison for murdering her husband. However, we discover through the piece that he was deeply, deeply abusive to her. And she talks about how she was in the first prison of her marriage and the second prison of her incarceration in an actual prison. And this sort of uh, hints at, has this atmosphere of a sort of the more general, the more totalitarian uh, government becomes, the less it can actually deal with the humanity and the personal situations of this woman who very much was a victim, even though she had committed this crime. And we um, sort of bookcase that again with Pinter, a um, speech he gave in the House of Commons defending free speech and the hypocrisy of demanding democracy abroad, but sort of edging towards totalitarianism. That might be too strong a word, but edging at least in that way. And we show a, a late Beckett a film that he made for German television, nine minutes long of a very abstract piece of hooded dancers, leading hooded dancers around a square in a very Beckettian way. There's a the center point of the square is never reached. <laughs> um, and then to cheer everyone up for the last mm. concert, mm. because also I, uh, I struggled with the last concert because it's so present, it's our time period now. Um, and so I decided to do satire, music, so politics, humor, and the way that actually satire can't exist without politicians behaving badly. <laughs> uh, I read a uh, Armando Iannucci quote the other week that that said that he's moved and he's doing a series in the US now because British politics is too bland for satire. Yeah. So, you know, you have to have the scandals and the misdemeanors mm. of politicians. Um, and we have a wonderful, really very funny piece by a young female composer called Joanna Lee, 
pulled every inch of many effigies, where she puts the sort of ideologies of George Bush and Margaret Thatcher on trial. It's not a political trial, it's not about their actions, but um, it's, it's very, very funny. Um, and we mix that with um, a piece by Philip Cashin, which is based on Los Capuchos, which are these Goya, beautiful little cartoons from the 1700s, which were basically satirical cartoons of, you know, the aristocracy as donkeys and, um, uh, you know, the clergyman behaving badly. And actually, interestingly, there's some in London at the moment at the Courtauld Institute. And we've spoken about them on this programme, which are, in fact. It's a gorgeous which is sketchy. Sorry, I shouldn't be plugging that, but it is <laughs> well, wonderful. But no, but absolutely, um, it's been absolutely fascinating speaking to you. It, uh, the South Bank Symphonia are playing the concerts. Yeah. And just tell us which dates you are playing when people can come and see you. We're on Sunday the 19th, Sunday the 26th, and then Saturday the 2nd of May. Fantastic. Jonathan, uh, as Jonathan explained, a wide range of events at the South Bank as part of a changing Britain, which runs until Sunday, Saturday even, the 9th of May. That's the Saturday, straight after the general election. Jonathan, thank you very much indeed.